We are Guy and Sandy Ashmore from That Guy's Family Farm. We are in southwest Ohio in between Cincinnati and Dayton. And our SARE project was uh, economic impact of late season tomatoes uh, crop with starting from suckers versus uh, seed. And we're getting our suckers from existing tomato plants and uh, seeing how much time savings that would be in a busy time. Uh, we also kind of limited on labor and equipment for greenhouse space so uh, suckers could be just taken from the plant and started and we're doing a uh, trial here with three different varieties. And we are a certified organic farm so we are following all those practices as well. The varieties that we have in here are really field varieties and not varieties you might find in a tunnel situation. So we have some Arkansas Travelers for uh, testing some heirlooms, uh, Big Beef, a very traditional red slicer, and then we have Fourth of July, which would be an early producer, um, early tomato, yeah. And one thing about uh, for being certified organic, it's hard to find late season tomato starts that are certified organic. So that's one reason we're really excited about these suckers. We could take them right from our farm and uh, not have to worry, search somewhere for expensive late season tomatoes. And uh, we're hoping in the tunnels, you know, a lot of research has been done on disease resistance, so we're kind of hoping to see how suckers will do with uh, plants started from seed. Yeah, and we we're also, you know, curious about, you know, um, wisdom and knowledge from the past. So this whole idea came about from someone telling us at market that their father would always start his late season tomatoes from the suckers. So at just, you know, a light bulb moment, we decided we thought we could do that. We are also a farm that didn't um, produce too many transplants in a greenhouse. So we did a lot of direct seeding. We um, depend on another grower that would do some of our transplants. So this was one way we could, you know, get, get a transplant without having a greenhouse. Well, I think, you know, if you're a limited resource farmer with uh, smaller um, equipment, you really wouldn't need a, a greenhouse. To start these transplants, you wouldn't have to uh, invest in the you know, potting soil and the likes. You can just take these suckers right off the plant. And right there, I think it's a big win situation that you don't have to worry in July if your seedlings are going to die in a greenhouse because you forgot to water them, which came close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think it just really kind of helps uh, be a full circle to keep everything on the farm. Your inputs are coming from the farm that you're working on, and you know, you're helping to build your soil, to build your plants, to, to continue that, that circle. Our one and you just well, you know, snap it off, and you would just stick that right in the soil mix. It's about there we do. And then the first, you know, uh, two or three days they're going to look like they're dead, just kind of like spinach, and then within about two weeks they'll be almost root bound in the container. Uh, Sarah, we went to Sarah because we've seen some research projects they've done in the past and it seemed like they're free thinkers too and willing to uh, support uh, new ideas, maybe even old ideas like the suckers from transplants. And uh, they've been uh, great to work with so far and uh, I think they're really good at spreading the education across the country at different regions they have. And it's uh, really been a big help and we always like looking at what everybody else is trying and you don't know till you do it really on the farm if it's going to work or not in a real life situation and I think Sarah's good at helping us do that.